morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Advance Your Commercial Insurance Sales webinar. My name is Ana Agostini, and I am CEO of CID Insurance Programs. I'm going to be your 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 instructor today, and um, and let's you know let's hope uh, we we get some um, we we put out there a few gems that will help you uh, in building your commercial book. So let's get started. So everyone knows the logistics. Uh, if you're new, I bet most webinars will have you muted because there's too many people to be um, that that um, would uh, be talking at once. And we want your questions, so please pose them in the chat room, and we'll be watching for those throughout the webinar, and I'll, and I'll answer those as we go along. So please make sure you ask a question if you have one. And then we'd like your feedback at the end. We'll be um, sending you a short um, survey uh, that will pop up, and we appreciate your feedback. So let's talk about what we're going to learn today. We want to better understand how to manage your commercial book. And um, it's, it's easier said than done sometimes because service can become so overwhelming. So let's we'll spend some time on that today. And then what is the secret to building a stable commercial book? That's a good one. And we'll talk about that as well. And then how do you manage commercial renewals and new business efficiently? That um, is a, a, that is a key to having a successful commercial book. Uh, I'm going to just I'm going to spend just a, a moment here because COVID is still you know uh, amongst us uh, and is still impacting people. So I just wanted to make sure that you are uh, aware that there is still flexibility with the carriers on uh, premium payment, especially with direct bill carriers, uh, and there are some carriers that are actually giving some kind of premium relief. Uh, each carrier uh, is determining how they're uh, handling that. So uh, you'll you'll hear from us as to uh, as it, each carrier takes a position. So, um, but we want to make sure that you know none of your policies cancel um, for non-payment if they need um, relief and need help. Um, make sure that you have your insured reach out directly to the carrier on direct bill policies. And, and then see, you know, contact our underwriter if you have further questions. Okay, so let's get into building a commercial book. Uh, and, and it's going to take more sales. So it's called the Balancing Act. You know, uh, where are you top heavy is a, a great question. And Pretty much most agencies are um, personal lines, life, commercial lines, and you could put life health in there because um, health um, can play a part in that. It depends on the agency. Um, but ideally, um, many agencies end up starting out in personal lines and they um, end up, you know, being less strong in commercial lines. So some people make it over that line, and they they build up a, a equally strong commercial lines book, and that's really I think the key to success is because um, commercial lines is far less uh, labor intensive, it has less service, and um, and and it's business to business, so it's it's less personal. So uh, I that's this is a great way for you to break up you know the percentage of your your lines of business okay so how do we go about balancing out that commercial book uh, commercial insurance needs are very different um, for every type of business so there's um, so you you will you, you have to learn each type of business that you come across that or uh, ideally focus on the type of business that you would like to, to put on the books. You want to definitely have a professional presentation for commercial insurance. That's going to be very different than personal lines in a lot of ways because it's a business relationship and it's, it's professional. So you will want to make sure that you are making a good impression. And then balancing out commercial, new business, and renewals 
um, can be a challenge. We'll talk more about that as we go along. Okay. Now, I call this the sales equation, but and I, this sales equation can actually work for both renewals and new business. Uh, and that's one of the things that we're going to spend a little time talking about is that the fact that uh, new business and renewals are equally important and both are, are, are part of the sales equation. So when you're talking about new business, you, you've got it, you're, you're, you're out there looking for X dates, expiration dates of uh, businesses that you can actually write, you know, write their, or, you know, propose their insurance uh, uh, at uh, you know, prior to the expiration date, and then you want to make a presentation, and then you are, are going to follow up and close it, and then ultimately it equals um, a bind of dollars in your pocket. Same thing with renewals. You know, you're gathering, you're, you're running it by expiration date, um, you're making a presentation, you're following up to make sure that they renew, and that also equals dollars. So the most important thing is to know that you can't just work one, you can't be a great ex-stater, um, and you can't just be a good presenter uh, or, um, or just a close person. You have, all parts of this have to be running efficiently. You also always have to be bringing in ex-states, and you need to be making, um, those professional presentations, and also always following up in order to get to that bind, whether it's new business or renewal. So those, this equation is very simple, but it really breaks it up into the parts that you have to equally focus on in order to continuously bind policies. Okay. So let's talk about that X date. We call it it's new business profiling. You want to know, you want to set weekly goal, sales goals and put your marketing plan into work. You want to make contact with business owners. Um, this is where you can't be shy. Um, you just choose an efficient way in order um, to be able to uh, get out there and, and um, make contact with people that you can develop a relationship with and write their business insurance. Um, you want to develop and manage profiles so you're actually creating a file, and it could be an electronic file, it could be a paper file, uh, of information for X states because when you're out there talking to people, the, um, you know, it, you know, the X date isn't going to be necessarily next week. It could be next year. It could be six months. It could be three months out. And so you're looking for as many X dates as you can get that you can work into the future. Of course, you're trying to find those that you can work right now, but you're building, you're building an inventory of uh, X dates that you can work as you go along. And then renewal pro profiling. Review each renewal to ensure adequate coverage, entertain placement with other carriers, right? And, and then make contact with your insured. It's really important. You, most commercial policies, you only have to touch once a year um, because they're not heavy in service, so except for maybe contractors and a few um, that require a lot of certs and things like that. But make contact with your insured and, and do a professional uh, renewal presentation once a year. Okay, and what about that presentation? Just because the guidelines say no doesn't mean your underwriter won't say yes. Wow, what do I mean by that? Um, it means that there's always exceptions to the rule, and um, and that's the idea is to not see just black and white, but to be able to see gray. And gray is somewhere in the middle where there 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 could be a argument made that this is a, a, a the risk definitely does does not uh, does does not should have an exception made for the guidelines that it would actually fit and that's definitely experience helps you become better at that um, but don't just say don't take no for an answer if you feel like you've got good reason um, for your underwriter to take a second look at it 
know your risk profile, know enough about the business, and that, that helps your, you know, your argument with your underwriter um, to make an exception. Build a storyline, especially if your underwriter is guideline, uh, is, is driven, uh, we've got driver there, but it's driven. Uh, and, um, and because you're, you're, you, have to, you have to be able to give them reasons why they would want to change your position or make an exception and have documentation to support it. Let's talk even further about the presentation. Who are you, which business owner or uh, personality type are you dealing with? Who is this prospect? You know, um, it's, it's, these, are, these are names that have been around a, a long time and these are probably older pictures of them because I haven't changed the pictures up. Um, but, but the personalities are the same. Um, so you've got Rambo. Everyone probably remembers Rambo. Uh, it's aggressive, assertive, you know, shoots from the hip, and they like to make decisions on the spot. And they would, they're the type of person you're going to want to make sure that you're giving them three proposals to compare from because they want to make the decision. And then you've got uh, a Jimmy Fallon who's indecisive want your opinion and what you think, what is the best choice, ready, you know, and then ready to move past the decision. If he trusts you, he'll go with your recommendations. Um, and so one proposal, possibly two, will work great for him because he, he just wants to keep moving on. You know, he's not going to, and he wants you to make the decision for him. And then Anderson Cooper uh, is more analytical. He's, um, he's going to be, uh, he wants to think about it. He doesn't want to be pressured into the sale. And you're going to have to leave proposals with him, and let. And you're going to have to give him comparisons and informational material, and and and, and make a return call uh, to to close the deal. And then there's Kim Kardashian, latest and greatest, has the mentality. Uh, that if everyone else is buying it, then so should she. Uh, always keeping up with the Joneses, expect them to impress, dress accordingly, and um, you don't you know, you don't push the sale, you coach it, you be her friend, and and that's you know and frankly, commercial insurance is very much relationship driven. So that this is this her personality is perfect for that because everyone wants. To um, it, it, everyone wants to be, you know, have a, a trust level. Um, so developing a relationship is a really important aspect of that. So what should the presentation look like? Let's now we're going to start. You know, it, it should be a professionally laid out proposal. Uh, and by the way, we have proposal templates, retail ones that, that we um, we. Uh, have on our website that you can easily get to, um, and um, and make your own. Put your logo on it, and their word documents, so you can you know edit them, make them you know fit. Uh, but they're and, and we we have a number of different ones for different types of coverages, different types of businesses. Uh, so it, that should be helpful to you because it you really do need to send out a professional presentation. Uh, you want to make sure to disclose information. Um, you always disclose your broker fees. In fact, we've got a broker fee agreement um, that we recommend that you use that's also in our template section. Um, so take a look at that as well. And then if there's any taxes, inspection charges, uh, if it's an audible policy, it's really important to disclose that because that's going to catch you later if uh, someone's under, you know, underestimated. Um, in order to keep the premium down, uh, because that audit's going to come and they're going to get caught one way or the other. Another really important area is exclusions. I have found over my years of experience that if you do not put the exclusions, um, the important exclusions on your proposal, you can get caught later on when you know a loss occurs and it's excluded, and you you know you're you're trying to say, hey, I told you, I told you. So that's why it's important to make sure it's in the proposal. And then bind only subject to conditions. That's really important as well because you're you're going to you're going to 
you're going to stipulate what's required prior to binding, and that, that it's in writing, and um, and you can hold them accountable to that. And then always include an invoice and a premium financing option, if if needed. Um, because it, it really everything is working to close the sale, so you need to give them something to pay off of. And then you know if if they if we've got an agency bill situation with larger premiums, then you, you definitely probably are going to need that premium finance uh, agreement. And then always be aware of the required signatures because really you're really trying to to get a clean bind in and uh, and only have to touch it once when when you close the deal. Okay, and then finally, a lot of people forget about this part or they think they're too busy doing thing, uh, other things. Service can really get in the way of, of the close. Close is important. You can make an appointment with a client, uh, and, and these days it's harder. You're making an appointment with a client is not as easy. You may be doing a Zoom or a go to meeting with the client uh, in order to present and close the sale. So. We have to think differently today because it is different, um, uh, and, unless they're willing to meet with you uh, in their office. Uh, so, but be sure to address coverage benefits versus premium. That's always I know it's a real tough one, um, but but if you if you understand the coverage benefits and you can bring forth coverage benefits that that they, they don't currently have on, on their current policy form, then that's always going to be, you know, great. It's always wonderful when you can save them some premium as well. But the coverage benefits in combination with with um, a competitive premium are much more powerful and convincing. Know your value added proposition. What do you bring to the table um, for uh, from you know, the stance of your agency? What uh, you know? How will your agency take care of them? What's that value proposition? Always ask for the business. That's you know that's part of the close. And then you know if you're going to ask for the business, you better close it right there uh, on the site. Obtain the signatures and get payment. Um, and and, it, and if, at worst case situation, it depends on the circumstances because it may have to go into their accounting department to get payment. But as long as he has an invoice, he can process it over to the accounting department. But get those signatures um, at least. Uh, so that you are closing, that closes the deal. And then securing the bind, because there's always going to be those subject to bind things that need to. And I know it's, you know, there's, it's, it's, there's so much that we do in general. And frankly, there's a lot, commercial does have a fair amount of documents that have to be, um, you know, um, have to be produced secured, you know, whether it's the loss runs or it's the applica signed application, um, the terrorism form, state required documents for non admitted business. So um, you just have to, you have to have a system and you have to have things organized so that when you go through that close process and you're securing that bind, sort of the close and securing the bind can happen simultaneously, ideally. So again, process the finance agreement. Um, you and and you will once you get this part, you've secured the bind and you, you you're actually binding. Um, you want to make sure that you pinned you, you diary or to ensure that the policy gets issued and you get paid your commission. That's an important part of it. And then forward proof of insurance to your new client and thank them for the business. Okay, so here's a different way to look at um, your new business um, and how to manage it. We used to, years ago, many years ago, manage by the month. And that we would be evaluating how we did with new business monthly. Well, by the time you get to the end of the month and you, uh, with, uh, so probably a week later, maybe even two weeks later, you're looking back at that month and you're going, Oh wow! And if and if and if you haven't done, you haven't accomplished what you wanted. Well, you're now 45 days from the first date that you were looking back to, and you're so time has lapsed. 
So we strongly recommend that you manage by your production, your new business production weekly. And so you're tracking it and um, totaling it. I mean, in our office, we produce a report uh, by underwriter every week that shows um, exactly how we have um, done the, the prior week. We don't wait a long time, so we know that if, if you know, we're, our, if, if there's, if we need to change anything or refocus, or um, we can do it. We can turn the ship around much more quickly. And so we know you always know where you're at if you're managing on weekly. Whereas monthly, you know, a month can the month goes by, you're into the second month, and you're looking way, way back. So this is how I recommend. By the way, Outlook. You can actually put the weeks on, you know, I think you can, there's a button on there that, where you can, you can label your calendar with, with the weeks, and that makes it a little bit easier, because you can see what week you're in. Okay, so, managing your commercial book, we're, we're talking about new business, you have to have a marketing strategy, so, and, you know, there's, there's so much that we do, but I think it's just important that you you have to pay a little bit of attention to all of these areas. And it doesn't it doesn't it, it, it can be little steps that you take. Not it doesn't have to be, you know, uh a big, you know, uh marketing plan. You you just you develop a simple small strategy that you start implementing a little bit each week. Uh, and and that's really it, that was should drive off of your X dating. So that's I mean, you want to manage those commercial profiles, which is um, you, you want to be um, you want to be tracking your X dates as they come up and start working them ten weeks out prior to, um, and and know where you're going with your you know with with the potential for new business. And if you don't have a lot of X states, it means that you've got to be constantly working to get more X states because you'll never have enough of them because not all of them are going to pan out to be um, a, a good uh, a, a policy uh, for you to buy. Follow the sales equation because you really got to use use that as your guide. Your X date presentation close equals buying. Set some weekly goals for yourself for premium. How much? How much PIF policy enforced? How many policies do you want to write? And how much premium do you want to write on a weekly basis? That's with, so that you, when you track your weekly new business, you can you can see how you've done, whether you're meeting those goals, whether they're reasonable or not. And you can increase your fee income with broker's fees. Uh, and and also premium financing, uh, depending on the agreement that you have with them. Sometimes you can earn um, off of the premium financing as well. So those are things that can always, you know, become make your policies, your commercial department more profitable. Sorry, right, got my little. Okay, and then renewal business. Treat every renewal like new business, and not. You can't. I can't say it any better than that. It's, it's, it's so important that renewals are treated because again, you don't touch these commercial policies throughout the year very much. So you, you know, if you're not, if you're not making that effort to reach out to that insured um, at least once a year, someone else is going to be hunting them, and you, they have to feel like you've taken care of them, that that you've got their back, and that you know. Uh, they can trust that they don't need to go anywhere else. And then manage by report. You should have an expiration report. Um, and so farmers, if you're a farmer's agent, farmers does all of that for you. So if it, when you have an outside book of business, and, and if you're independent, you might have an agency management system. but uh, Or you may not, depends on, on the size of your agency. Um, but either way, you know, Excel makes a great, you know, uh, ability. And we have on our website a Excel spreadsheet um, with the months of the year, and you can create your own um, expiration list for your renewals uh, that you can work year after year after year. Um, 
and that um, that's that's a super important thing. We have a, a 60, 30, 10, um, start 60 days out gathering the information you need, and 30 days, get your proposal out there, and um, at um, 10 days, you're giving a reminder, uh, follow-up to, to get the renewal bound. So that's the way to manage your report. And you will have, like, you'll be working, you know, probably three or four months at a time um, because you're 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 looking back and moving forward at the same time and then know your retention and lapse ratio so close out that month and and we say manage those by reports renewals I like to manage by not by week but by month uh, so you're looking at you know that's why you'll be doing different months at a time and uh, because you go back and you you take a look at that month and say how was my retention how you know did I retain at least 90 to 95 percent of my uh, renewal premium that's that's what you want to be looking at you want to be looking at lapse situations where you're losing them midterm or canceling midterm first year or you don't make it to the second to the renewal at all um, because it doesn't renew after the first year. Those are all signs of, you know, that you, you, types of policies you're writing may not necessarily be stable for your agency. And then manage policy audits. You have to, you really have to keep an eye on those to make sure that, um, especially if an audit produces a result that is, you know, causes an increase in premium, you want to make sure that the, pol the existing policy gets, uh, yeah, gets endorsed to correct so that you don't keep repeating this because audits, when premiums do on an audit, it's usually due now and um, uh, it's not like where you get a payment plan. And they do offer them in situations where, uh, you know, there's a hardship for the insured. So uh, always ask for that as needed. And then this is a perfect time to ask for referrals because if people are happy with you, um, they, will, they will refer a friend. That's, we get a lot of our business by referrals. Okay, and then now let's talk about service. Service sometimes can actually be the people end up, it's sort of like droning, it's a processing kind of, and some people find it so much easier just to do service than to do all the things that really make your agency successful. So you really have to watch that and your employees will do the same thing. So when, you know, if you're going to hire people, you know, duplicate yourself, all all employees are a part of the sales equation. Um, you don't just have them be, you know, um, a data input person or customer service. Everyone has to buy into the objectives of the agency and help um, build it because there's, there's cross-sell going on. I mean, people are doing, everyone needs to understand the, the objective uh, and the goals of the, the agency. Work smart use forms and templates, that, that's what we live off of. And then, you know, for uh, some of your employees, you may want to use time management sheets uh, to, to ensure that they're getting uh, everything accomplished that needs to get accomplished. Good, uh, good, use good judgment and problem solving. Problem solving is huge in uh, the insurance world. <laughs> There's always a problem waiting to happen, happening. Uh, and then uh, prevent cancellations. You you have you want to have a payment follow up system. We use one. We will be reminding you. It's important that you use a system um, uh, in your own office. If you don't have one, you need assistance with developing one. We can we can we can we have um, some uh, simple how to systems that that um, we can offer uh, to help you with. And then, um, and then always uh, cross sell. Okay, so also, I, I, many of you have probably been to our website. This is our, our newer website. It's, uh, I think we released it a, um, uh, maybe a couple months ago. Uh, and so, it's we didn't change all the good things about it. We just we gave it a little bit of a facelift. So we're 
we've got uh, phone and web quoting on the, on the website. So uh, through USLI, um, we offer a, a, a lucrative commission structure on that. Um, we, I prefer the phone quoting because you can talk to an underwriter, and in five minutes you can get a quote on without an application, which is really cool. So check that out. You can see this is that's just a little photo of our home page, and you can see where you would click for phone and web. And um, and then um, we'd love to have the opportunity to do business with you. So um, reach out to your underwriters, uh, and um, which I think I've got one. I've got one more slide that I'm going to show you them. And then we've got the marketing tools and templates. So check out the marketing tools because you can customize them for yourself. And and then the, the proposal templates are there as well. And then of course we are constantly doing webinars. You can you can see you sign up for new ones, and you can watch recorded ones to your heart's content. And here are our underwriters. You've got uh, Sienna who does professional liability, Teresa who does garage and commercial, um, Michelle does nonprofit and commercial. She, she does all the Cab and Lexus Risk, and um, and then uh, Lexi uh, does all of our workers' comps. So they are a super team of uh, really efficient underwriters, uh, responsive, and uh, there to help you and answer your questions um, when you when you need us. So please uh, visit our website. Um, we for those of you that are doing business with us, thank you so much for um, uh, trusting and, uh, and doing business with us. And uh, for those of you who haven't, I encourage you to try us out. I think you'll find us um, really uh, helpful in growing your commercial book business. Thanks again for joining us. Have a great day.